Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brett, and I'm doing my Raw review for the second week straight. I did my first one last week, which had a little bit, well, I mean, not really that much success. It had 30 views, but it's still 30 more than I had without doing a video, so I'm going to do another one. First of all, I just want to say, rest in peace, Robin Williams. He's such, like, a big comedian of, of my time and time before, or generations before. He, uh, in a lot of great movies, I mean... Miss Doubtfire, Jumanji is the notorious one that we'd always have to watch if we had a substitute teacher, anything like that. So it's just sad to see him go, and the the issue with suicide and everything. Apparently, he committed suicide. That's just no good. Uh, one of my best friends from my childhood actually committed suicide, and it's one of the hardest things to find out. It's just you you have no clue about it, and if there was anything you could do you would go back and do whatever it was necessary so i i could definitely uh i could definitely kind of it, it was more sad because it was suicide just because having that personal experience having my friend commit suicide before but anyway let's get into this it's the the raw review for august 11th 2014 for the 2014 uh, my thing is I name all the episodes and this week's episode is named Party's Over Grandpa and we'll find out why that is later um, surprisingly this week's episode did not start out with the authority it was uh, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar they started out hyping up the Cena versus Lesnar match at SummerSlam of course uh, Lesnar didn't say a thing and Paul Heyman rapped at one point, which I mean, it rhymed, but it, this rap took about three years to get out probably like three sentences of content, but I mean, it rhymed. It was, it was pretty good. Paul Heyman was uh, money on the mic, and that's pretty much all that happened. That was the opening segment, and then it went on to a match between, uh, well, it was Roman Reigns comes out, you find out he's, he's going to have a match, and then uh, Kane's music comes on. And Kane is now back to corporate Kane. So let's see. We went from Mass Kane, got beat by the Wyatt family, took a hiatus to film See No Evil 2, then comes back as corporate Kane, then Mass Kane, now back to corporate Kane. Um, so I guess he's supposed to be more evil as a corporate guy. I, I, I don't quite understand the gimmick change. I mean, um, they also, <laughs> Michael Cole also called him the. Uh, the big red demon instead of the demon cane and a mixture of the big red monster and the demon cane anyway that i that kind of confused me I, I don't understand why he's back to corporate cane i guess the character was getting stale but if you're kind of trying to pitch him as being more evil corporate cane isn't as evil and scary looking as a guy with raw meat as his face anyway cane announces he has a match something about how Roman Reigns took out two people, so his match tonight is against two people. So he had to face Rybaxel, and um, there were it was highs and lows of this match where Rybaxel and uh, Roman Reigns both had control. Uh, the best part while they're in the ring was uh, Curtis Axel being in the uh, in the uh, turnbuckle in the corner of the ring, and then uh, Ryback went in, tag in the big guy, tag in the big guy, tag me. In. I, I love it when Ryback does anything about the big guy. It's just, he's, Ryback's one, to me, one of the most underrated characters, and I wish, I wish we could get more Ryback and not have him be, like, jobber. Anyway, um, they go outside of the ring. Um, let's see, they go outside of the ring. Roman Reigns is getting tossed into the ring post a bunch of times. It, it looks like it hurt, um, and finally, the the uh, ref calls the match, calls it disqualification, which, I mean, I, I've never really seen a match in a disqualification with throwing people in the ring post, but they had to call it eventually. I guess maybe Reigns didn't want to take a chair shot, um, which led to them throwing Roman Reigns back into the ring. Roman Reigns then gets up. Uh, people were calling for the spear and everything. It, it's kind of starting to fit with the, the the Roman Empire name. People said the Roman 
Empire. People calling for a spear like the Roman Colosseum. That's it was kind of cool to see that because it's kind of comparable to history. After that, Reigns had a promo on Randy Orton, called him a worm. And I, I kind of missed that. I was flipping back through Raw and the Rays game. That was the only time I missed anything. My bad. And then Kane, Randy Orton, they're talking backstage after. And Kane assigns a match for Randy Orton. He tells you that the authority wants him to face Sheamus. So that's set for the main event. <clears throat> RVD versus Seth Rollins was next. This match, it was a great match. Uh, RVD looked about 10 years younger on it. He was hitting everything. He was hitting the split leg moonsault, hitting the rolling thunder. He he was selling everything great. RVD looked like the old RVD tonight, except just with a more receding hairline. But he did a great job selling this match. Him and Seth Rollins have great, great, uh, they're great working together. Very good and I blanking on the word but anyway they they work very great together they mesh and uh rvd sells the curb stomp better than anybody i've seen because a lot of people kind of uh give up on the curb stomp when their face starts getting to the floor rvd just lets his head go right then i guess uh smoking all that weed like he's he's able just to not feel it but it was a great sell. I can't wait to see if uh, Dean Ambrose takes a curb stomp. How he sells it, because he's always known for really selling the moves. I, I I'm so excited for the Ambrose Rollins lumberjack match. So that's probably one of my favorite matches on the card. I I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm also an Ambrose Mark, so you could uh, you could also say I'm biased. Then uh. The next thing that happened was Stephanie McMahon comes out and says she has a confession for Brie Bella. And they bring some girl that's supposed to be Daniel Bryan's physical physical therapist that's helping him rehab his neck injury. And this girl comes in, she's got bug eyes, and I, I mean, usually when men cheat, they do usually cheat on their wife with a, a girl that's less attractive. So this was reality era. Even though it seemed like an Attitude Era segment. That's the most Attitude Era I, I, I felt. It's probably like CM Punk's Pipe Bomb or something like that. Um, so anyway, this girl comes in. She's crying, even though there's no tears. Her crying, her crying acting ability is... <laughs> and then she look up, everything's dry. Um, she comes in and says her and her boyfriend broke up. And she... She cheated on there. She's been having an affair with Daniel Bryan. Uh, Brie Bella comes out, and this is when it turns into an attitude era segment. Is when Stephanie McMahon's like, "Oh yeah, by the way, Michelle, which is the name of the physical therapist, said your husband Daniel says in bed, Brie, you're like a dead fish." And then she <laughs> she started saying stuff about how. Michelle in the bedroom is every time she's been with Daniel she goes yes yes and there was lots of that and then Bree slaps the physical therapist and puts uh, Stephanie McMahon one of the worst yes locks ever it it was so botched looking it, it looked like it was going to break Stephanie McMahon's arm because it was so botched and then Stephanie's selling it she just sticks her tongue out um it was a good segment, though. It was, it was one of the more enjoyable things tonight. It's hokey. Obviously, you know that this girl's probably like an independent wrestler or someone in NXT. But it was a good segment. It it gave some meaning to the story, and it wasn't in the main event hour. It, it was something. It, it wasn't as good as, uh, as Ryback saying the big guy. But it was, it was, it was all right. Um... After that, Swagger versus Cesaro. It was a great match. Cesaro, uh, the, there was one awkward part where Cesaro is trying to take the tape that they have around Jack Swagger's ribs. He had that because apparently he had a broken rib from last week, Rusev hitting him with a flag. And Cesaro's trying to take his tape off with his teeth. And it was kind of awkward, and he didn't get the tape off at all. But besides that, 
the match was great. Um, obviously, Cesaro's not doing the the giant swing anymore because it gets too much face face uh, too much of a face reaction from the crowd, and that doesn't get any heel heat. Um, so I mean, it was a great match, and then after Rusev, uh, well, him and uh, Zach. <laughs> Zach. Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter they have a, a a promo in the ring We the People and Rusev comes out with Lana and she was looking great Lana was looking fine her name backwards though um, they come out and they pretty much just have a Mexican standoff no talking from Lana no Rusev Prusikith Rusev Crusher None of that. It was just a standoff hyping up the match so you don't really know who has the upper hand going into SummerSlam, which I'm sure Jack Swagger is going to win. They never break the American flag in the flag match unless it's in Canada. After that was a Michael Cole interview. It was Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho. And tonight, I... I've always known Bray Wyatt does really well with this character. He's great. But tonight in that interview, that I was sitting there, I was like, man, why is this guy not acting in, in Hollywood movies? Why is he still... Well, I mean, obviously he loves wrestling, but how long is he going to stay in that role? This guy could, could play whatever character, probably. He's playing... Uh, a character, a Bray Wyatt, and nails it. Imagine what he could do, where he, where he doesn't have to wrestle every night and just focus on a character. Imagine what he could do in movies. I think Bray Wyatt is a, a future star when it comes to movies and wrestling. Um, Chris Jericho did well in it. It was uh, Bray Wyatt was just talking about uh, everything in his life and. He he's the eater of worlds, the eater of worlds. <laughs> follow the buzzards, and Jericho said he's gonna follow the buzzards and throw them right down Bray Wyatt's throat. It, it was good. That was the best segment probably, besides the Hulk Hogan birthday bash, which we'll get into. Um, after that, AJ Lee versus Eva Marie. Eva Marie wins on a roll up, the surprise roll up. And it was because of Paige being outside the ring, skipping around. Paige tells a poem at one point. There was a lot of rhyming on Raw. A lot of, a lot of uh, AABB rhyme schemes. Um, then AJ Lee, after this match happens, after she gets beat, goes outside the ring and beats up Eva Marie. So at this point now, we have Paige, who's a heel. Eva Marie was the heel of the match. AJ Lee is supposed to be a face. And then AJ Lee beats up Eva Marie, which is a heel. That's that's heel stuff. I know she's supposed to be crazy, but that's still a heel move. So I was confused why she's beating her up after the match. If she's supposed to be going into SummerSlam as the baby face. Um, after that, I mean, that that wasn't that there wasn't much there that was important. It. After that was Cena's promo where he he said that uh, for one night only you're gonna have him have him turn. He he mentioned his heel turn that everybody wants, and he said you're gonna see a new Cena at SummerSlam six days for nine ninety nine, nine ninety nine. You're gonna see a new Cena, and he's gonna turn. And that's pretty much what that promo was about. There was no standoff, no no battle in that promo. Um, oh yeah, uh, during the Brie Bella segment, uh, Stephanie McMahon announces they're going to have their match tonight, and then Brie Bella comes out, and Stephanie McMahon says that the physical trainer, physical therapist, uh, uh, is wanting, uh, Brie Bella to be arrested. She put, she put a claim in and everything for aggravated assault, and so Brie Bella, one second, there's a bug over here. Is that, is that a heel tactic? That's a bug right there. He's dead. Is that a heel move? That's what you get, Ant. Anyway, sorry, I derailed myself. Uh, Brie Bella gets arrested. 
the physical therapist, you know, uh, gets her charged with aggravated assault, and she gets arrested just like Stephanie McMahon. Hashtag free bu- free free Brie. Free Brie. It rhymes. Free Brie. <coughs> Brie, Brie, Brie. And then uh, after that, Dolph Ziggler versus Heath Slater. Um, the best part in this was an accident where JBL accidentally unplugs Mrs. Mike while he's ringside. He's sta- standing up on the announcer's table, and all of a sudden, Miz is talking, and you see a and uh, Michael Cole's reaction is, The best thing you've ever done, JBL, is unplug the Mrs. Mike. And, and then you just see him fumbling around trying to put the mic back in. That was a pretty funny part. Uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Slater. It was an alright match. Slater ends up winning via via countout, though, which makes Heath Slater on a huge roll. They're pushing Heath Slater. Next WWE champion. Can't wait. Mr. Money in the Bank, King of the Ring. They're going to bring King of the Ring back, too. That, I, I'm calling it right now, and Heath Slater's going to win that. Uh, what, what was the thing that they used to box, like in the Attitude Era? They'll bring that back. He'll win that. Um, after that was the main event, Randy Orton versus Sheamus. Uh, it was a good match for being two big brawlers and everything. It it wasn't the match of the night. Match of the night still goes to uh, what match? Did I, <laughs> what match should I declare match of the night? Uh, you know, some. Oh, I I would say it was RVD, uh, Seth Rollins, and that's because they have such great chemistry. That's the word I was looking for. If you're still watching. That's what I meant about 10 minutes ago. Um, Rollins and RVD have such great chemistry. Randy Orton, Sheamus. This this match works better as like a weapons match. Extreme Rules or something. It's, it, I, mean, I mean, they're just like brawlers. And it was a good match. Sheamus had some bruises going into this match, though. His entire arm, like his bicep, was covered in a bruise. And it looked like piss yellow paint was because <laughs> I guess it healed a little bit and when Seamus shows bruise it's bruises it's creepiest looking thing ever I've I've always just realized that the the great part about this match the ending made it a, a pretty good match because Seamus goes from the goes for the uh, top rope shoulder block that he usually does and R- and uh, Randy Orton RKO's him and that was a beautiful RKO um so that that match was all right it gives both Randy Orton and uh, and Roman Reigns some some uh, I mean they they're going good with positive traction into SummerSlam. Uh, they they both look strong, so it hypes up the match more. And then finally, uh, it was Hulk Hogan's birthday celebration. This this segment was awesome. I knew, I knew something was gonna have to happen at the end because it's too kiss assy, and. Um, so Hulk Hogan comes out, uh, all the superstars are up on the Titan Tron area, the entrance, he comes out, Mean Gene Okerlund comes out, the mouth of the south, Jimmy Hart, oh my goodness, Hulk Hogan, what are you going to do, come on, you got to beat Andre the Giant, he comes out, uh, Mean Gene, I love, oh, Hulk Hogan, yeah, blah, 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 I, I, I love Mean Gene, one of the best things is YouTube, uh, search on YouTube for this, uh, Hulk Hogan trains Mean Gene Okerlund. It was for a match they had against Georgie Animal Steel and uh, Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fuji and the Animals, the tag team they had to beat, and they ended up winning. But the training, they have a whole training montage thing, and it's hilarious. I I love that video. Um, So they come out, and then all these legends start coming out. Ric Flair comes out. uh, Mr. Wonderful comes out. Roddy Piper comes out. And then... The ultimate mark out moment. Doom. Damp, damp, doom. Damp, doom. Do, 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 world order. For life. When, when that NWO music hit, man, I I lost it. Because that, that's my childhood. That's when I'm seven, eight, nine years old when the NWO is running everything. That's every bit of my childhood. And man, I marked out. And uh, getting to see Hogan in an NWO shirt, he ripped off the Hulk rule shirt, and they they did the too sweet. And then Brock Lesnar comes out, and this is where the title comes from. Brock Lesnar gets a mic, kind of a 
bumps into Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, goes up to Hulk Hogan. Party's over, Grandpa! And that was the best line of the night because we finally got to hear Brock Lesnar talk. Um, about the 30 minutes that he was on screen tonight, he said one sentence, Party's over, Grandpa. Um, Cena comes out for the save, of course, you know. Has to save his boy Hulk Hogan. And Brock Lesnar walks away. So nobody really has the true momentum going into SummerSlam. It's not like usual where someone gets beat down. You know the rule of wrestling that usually that person that gets beat down is going to be the winner. The person that does the beating usually loses. But anyway, I I, I would say this is a good go-home Raw before the pay-per-view. Um, I kept this video a lot shorter than last week. I, I hope I did better this week. I feel like I did. Less rambling, obviously. It's a going to be about an eight minute shorter video um and i guess i'll ha possibly have a show after SummerSlam. i i'll th i'll think about doing a review then if if people want it people want me to shut up then well go to hell i'm still gonna make these um anyway thank you for watching this if you did please like subscribe share it with everybody that you know especially like it uh and you can also follow me on twitter it's at t-h-e-b-m jacobs i guess i should one more time at t-h-e-b-m-j-a-c-o-b-s at the b-m jacobs it'll be in the description anyway see you at SummerSlam. let's hope for a good card well we know the card's good but let's hope for a good show soup